Every PC gamer deserves a quality gamepad, especially retro gamers. But new gamepads don't support all their games and vice versa. Thankfully, there's a controller on the market that covers all fronts. Not only it fits both new and retro games, but also a variety of operating systems and platforms. Let's take a look. Pixel Polish. Greetings runners and welcome back to Pixel Polish TV, coming at you live straight from the cyberspace. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In today's broadcast we'll take a closer look at one of my favorite controllers coming from a long line of gamepads made by Logitech. That controller is Logitech F710, a cordless sibling of the wired F310 gamepad, both of which are rare examples of controllers that will satisfy the needs of both modern and retro gamers alike. But before we get into the nitty gritty, how about you do us a favor and tap that subscribe button and a quick like also wouldn't hurt. It only takes a few seconds and we get a small boost in the YouTube algorithm in the process, allowing us to reach more people like you. Thanks in advance. Ok, now back to the topic at hand. Let's start with the form factor layout and basic features. As you can see it sports a rather small shell reminiscent of the DualShock controller, with symmetrical analog stick alignment, button layout and short handles. Just like the DualShock, it's meant to be held with your fingers rather than a full grip, which is perfect for me. But for those who prefer to feel like riding a motorcycle and playing, oh well. Then there is no pleasing you. It's not right. F710's shape will also look familiar to old school PC gamers, which shouldn't be a surprise given that Logitech used nearly unchanged shell for their gamepads since mid 2000s. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Pretty much, the main difference between this gamepad and its predecessors is that it's equipped with proper analog triggers instead of digital ones and a central home button that finds different applications depending on the platform. A finishing touch in form of partially rubberized grips is also a new addition, replacing the historically full plastic finish. In fact, the whole backside of the controller is covered in a silk-like rubbery coating, but as great as it feels at first, there's an issue with this sort of material that I will get back to later. This one is a little scuffed, but I've used it for hundreds, if not thousands of hours since I bought it in 2014 to replace my Xbox 360 controller. Logitech F710 comes at a whopping 294 grams with batteries installed, which places it among some of the heaviest gamepads out there. For comparison, DualShock 4 only weighs 215 grams, and the biggest and heaviest controller that I own, the Nvidia Shield TV gamepad, doesn't even come close at its already substantial 256 grams. Part of that weight comes from the batteries of course, mine adding 60 grams, but since there is no way to use this gamepad without them, it makes sense to add everything up. Speaking of which, F710 uses two standard AA batteries. This means you can't charge this controller directly, but in my opinion the pros of this solution far outweigh the cons. Using easy to find replaceable batteries eliminates the issue of limited built-in battery lifespan and you get to decide how long the controller will work on a single charge, not the manufacturer. I always use rechargeable cells with at least 2500 mAh capacity, which guarantees uninterrupted gameplay for hours on end and produces less toxic waste in the long run. Say no to single-use batteries. Or else, I'll turn you into a f***ing tree. Captain Planet, motherfucker. In general, this gamepad offers all of the expected features of its console counterparts. 10 buttons, 2 analog sticks, 8-way D-pad and 2 pressure sensitive triggers. Face buttons are nice and clicky with a good amount of resistance, so none of that unsatisfying cheap controller mashiness to be found here. Analog sticks are a bit on the firm side, so less PS4 and more PS2-like. For me that's less than ideal for first and third person shooters, but works just fine with any other genre. It's also worth noting that over the years of usage, these sticks never started drifting and the dead zones are still perfectly tuned. One of the most important reasons that made me switch to this gamepad is its excellent D-pad. Even though it looks similar to the Xbox 360 equivalent, going with the disc instead of the cross design, it's beyond comparison, as it rests on four clicky switches instead of a single wonky and unreliable pivot point. I wouldn't call it the best D-pad I've used, because that title goes to PlayStation Vita, but in my opinion it's leagues ahead of PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 controllers, which were its main competitors at the time of release. One nifty feature worth mentioning is the mode button on the left side of the controller. With a single press of this button, you can flip functionality between D-pad and left analog stick. 
This can be quite useful in some games that don't take advantage of the analog stick, but lend themselves well to that control scheme. I have to say that I love this controller's analog triggers, with their somewhat understated profile, but just enough travel to give you precision control. Now while the shape of those triggers might be quite elegant, it's their resistance that can be an issue for many people, including me. I eventually had to mod them to avoid getting blisters after long racing sessions, but I've got salad fingers, so your mileage can vary. Uh -huh. Modding the trigger springs is very easy though, as long as you can operate a screwdriver without poking your eye out. Years after I did it, someone uploaded a decent guide to YouTube, so I will link it in the description box below. F710 features dual vibration feedback motors and let me tell you, these bad boys certainly get the job done. While not as strong as first generation DualShock, every shot and every bump on the road will provide a satisfying tactile feel, but without giving on carpal tunnel syndrome. To connect with the computer, F710 uses a 2.4GHz nano receiver that goes into a USB port, if you can guess which side is up without dropping the damn thing. There's a special slot in the controller's battery compartment that holds the receiver, so you don't lose it easily when storing and moving it around. Oh, and it also comes with an extension cord for the receiver in case you need to place it somewhere away from the machine it's plugged into. The cord itself is around 160cm long, so I guess about 117 sticks in Imperial units? And half a stick is an inch! <laughs> All jokes aside, does this controller work with anything other than modern PCs? I'm glad you asked, because this is where this gamepad truly shines. Both official and unofficial compatibility list of F710s is quite a treat. Officially, it supports modern Windows systems as well as Android platforms like phones and smart TVs. What the instruction doesn't say, however, is that you can also use it with PlayStation 3 and more. I have personally used it as a spare controller for couch co-op on PlayStation 3, but also with Nvidia Shield TV emulators and Steam games played remotely on my TV via Steam Link. This is where the big central Logitech button comes into play, as it serves as Android's home button and brings up the big picture mode on Steam. Aren't you forgetting about something, Chief? What, the tiny switch on top of the controller that many people completely ignore or never question its existence? Of course I didn't forget about it, silly. Talk about last but not least. This tiny little DX switch is a real game changer when it comes to this gamepad's versatility. In fact, thanks to this switch I've been able to use F710 extensively while reviewing GTA Vice City for the channel, especially during driving and flying sections. You see, on Windows PC there are two input standards, Direct Input, which was in use since 1995, and X Input, which migrated to Windows from Xbox 360. What does all of that mambo jumbo mean? Basically, new generation of gamepads won't work with older Direct Input games, while older PC controllers won't work with the new games that use X input exclusively. Hence, to cover all fronts on PC, you would need to use different gamepad for every input type. And this is where Logitech F710 comes in. With a flick of this mysterious slider, you can switch between direct input and X input on the fly, allowing you to slay in your Soul Reavers and your Witchers on the same computer without any hassle. Choosing direct input is also what allows this gamepad to work with PlayStation 3, why X input works with Android devices by default. But if you thought that's all, you would be wrong. Next part will make many retro PC enthusiasts really happy. F710 works natively in Windows XP, 98, and even Windows 95. Just switch to direct input mode, plug it in, install Wingman software, and you're ready to go. Do you need any software or drivers to use it on modern Windows platforms? For casual everyday usage, no. But if you install Logitech Profiler, you can use it with the controller set to D mode to reassign buttons, adjust vibration strength, tweak the analog sticks and more. You can even map mouse and keyboard to this gamepad to use it with games that do not support controllers natively. There is, however, one issue that I have with this controller and it's the backside coating that I have mentioned at the beginning. At first it felt like pure silk, but over the years the texture has changed quite a bit. This is a common problem with this type of finish, that is why I typically try to stay away from those these days. I have used many peripherals with this type of coating before, like the Hori Grip for 3DS or the Power Grip for PlayStation Vita. Both of them became unusable after a couple of years because the silky coating turned into wet, sticky tar, 
while this gamepad got only more rubbery to the touch, which isn't that bad, thankfully. Actually, even though it feels somewhat less premium now, it's also more grippy, but without the icky, tarry nastiness of the other peripherals that I've shown. As far as I know, this coating can be removed with a bit of patience and isopropyl alcohol, but even after 7 years it didn't get to the point where I would feel the need to do it. So, anything else worth mentioning? Actually, I think we've covered everything, both the good and the bad. Logitech F710 is one of the very few PC gamepads that I can safely recommend. Anyone looking for a versatile controller for both modern and retro games should definitely check this one out, especially since it works with a variety of systems and platforms. And in case you're wondering, no, this isn't a paid promotion. I stand behind this gamepad only because I can personally vouch for it after years of usage. That being said, if someone at Logitech is listening, then well, you know, we're open to opportunities. But since we all know that will never happen, you can support us instead by simply liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and if you're feeling extra supportive, you can become our patron and get featured in all of our future videos. Just throwing it out there. As always, you can find all the links mentioned in this video in the description box below. That's right. But in the meantime, I would like to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you around in the future. Stay tuned, runners. Pixel Polish, signing out. Take care, everyone. See you again soon.